Hi, my name is Michael, this is The Slice, and in today's episode, we're interviewing Dan Borley. So today on the show, we have Dan. How are you, Dan? I'm good, thanks, Mike. A little bit bored. I mean, we, bored. whatever it is of lockdown now. I actually don't even know. I, act, I actually don't even know what day it is, to be honest. I know it's not the weekend, so <laughs> I, I'm, I'm getting somewhere. Um, so the, the rules of the show is you get 20 minutes. Now, I'm going to set a timer on my phone, and at the end of 20 yeah. minutes, that's it. So if you're in mid-conversation... That's it. I've got to cut you off. Um, so okay. are, you, are you ready for this? As ready as I, I will ever be, yeah. Good stuff. Let's do this. So I have set my timer now. So Dan, tell okay. me, um, we know you as Dan the Mortgage Man, but also yes, we are in a, a, a bit of a, a pandemic at the moment and you have been furloughed. So there are some things we can and can't talk about today. Is that right? Yes, yeah, it is. So it's a really weird. So if I tell you a little bit of background about me, I've been doing mortgages for four or five years. Um, I worked for a company called Countrywide, who are the biggest brokers in the UK. I left Countrywide in December. They were with me as I figure out the years, 2018. Mm -hmm. um, I went self-employed. Um, during that time, I then moved up to the lovely Northwest from Essex, as you could probably tell from the accent. Um, and moving up, pretty much killed any business that I had and any momentum I had. So at the end of last year, so what was about three or four months ago now, I made the decision to go back to being employed and I went back to Countrywide. Uh, joined them in February and then got put on furlough in March. So it's been a really weird, I suppose, year and a half for me. Um, but under the rules of furlough, there's only so much I can say. So I can't, I can't promote any business. So if you wanted a mortgage, I couldn't do it for you at the moment and stuff like that. So the question really is, because obviously, I mean, I'm self-employed. I haven't been furloughed. Um, so just explain to people that are listening uh, or watching, rather, uh, what the furlough system is, what you can and can't do. OK, so the furlough system is basically the government has come up with this plan to pay 80 percent of um, basic wage for the vast majority of people that can't continue being permanently employed or permanently at work during this crisis. Um, so taking Countrywide as, as an example, Countrywide are a big, big company. No, no one's ever heard of them, but they're a massive company. They've got thousands of employees. They're mainly estate agency based. And in this day and age, in the past few weeks, we've not been able to do any estate agency work, we've not been able to get any mortgage work through. And therefore, there's no point paying people a wage to sit in an empty shop and there's no one walking past. Um, so they've adopted the furlough scheme. So the government are paying 80% of everyone's wages, but under the rules, that then means because I'm on furlough, the government are paying 80% of my wage for me. Um, and I'm not allowed to bring in any business for the company because I'm, then I'm deemed to be working and countrywide should be paying me 100% and keeping me at work. Um, there've been a lot of gray areas. So when it was first announced, it was announced they're going to pay 80% of this, but they didn't know if it included commission or bonus. It's then being capped at a certain amount, two and a half thousand every month. Um, and they weren't too sure whether you could take holidays or whether you could do any work and stuff like that. Um, but it's been cleared up now. And it, yeah, the, the rules are you get paid 80%, but you pretty much got to sit home and not do any work at all. So how does that feel for you as an individual um, who has, like you said, just recently moved uh, to a different area and if you've built up that momentum and, you know, being self-employed, you know, you have to actively be selling your wares, going out there, speaking with people, making connections. How do you feel having, you know, this pandemic that nobody really expected to happen? Uh, mm -hmm. How do you feel this is going to affect you moving forward and going back to work? Do you think it's going to be different? Do you think you'll be able to just pick it up again as you go back? For, for me personally, I think I can pick it up and go back to work tomorrow or six months time. I don't think there's going to be a big difference. I think the difference for me is that it's going to trickle back through. So we're not going to open the doors on day one and have um, the same amount of business that we had before in the same way that, for example, a coffee shop would do. Um, as soon as Costa open their doors and everyone's back on the streets, they will pretty much go back up to where they were before. Mm. Um, I think it's caused a lot of people to um, reflect on what they're doing. I think we're going to see a lot of people come out of this pandemic and this lockdown um, 
working more at home because they've, they've had the opportunity to and they're, they're doing it but also with a different family dynamic because if you're stuck indoors with a family in the nicest possible way that's a really difficult thing to do for several weeks at a time and we're going to find that people are outgrowing their properties they want something bigger there's going to be people splitting up and wanting different houses for the mortgage market that's brilliant because it means people are going to come to me because they want to move house and move on um, so i think we'll get back into it not necessarily straight away but um, we'll get back to where we were um, but I think the whole landscape in the UK and the world is going to change because so many people who have been tied to a desk for decades are now able to work from home and they're being as productive, if not more productive than they were before. So it's going to be really interesting. There is always, and I, I, this, is, this is the motto I live by, there is always a positive situation to come out of any neg- negative situation ever, right? Mm. So for myself, I've, ne- I've not worried since day one. I mean, you know, I do still live at home. Um, uh, yes, I'm self-employed. Um, you know, I still have bills to pay. But, you know, before this pandemic, and I don't know if, we, you know, you can, you can answer this because of the, the furlough. Um, in terms of mortgages, in terms of people wanting to move house and people realising that, you know, um, what they had before was probably not working for them um, and they want to change. First time buyers, for example. Yeah. Um, now... I'm, I'd be a first-time buyer and I'm in the process of, of earning enough money and saving enough money to be able to buy my own mortgage or, or get my own mortgage. Yep. Moving, going back, obviously the economy needs to move. Will it be easier for first-time buyers or will it be harder for first-time buyers going back? Uh, it depends who you listen to. And if I had the answer, then I'd be a millionaire. <sighs> um, Darn it. <laughs> I'm sorry. Darn it. <laughs> and the lovely numbers for this week are... Uh Um, I think it depends how the uh, economy reacts. So when people start going back to work, if we assume that everyone goes back to work at more or less the same amount of time, um, more or less earning the same as they were before, nothing should really change. So it will be as easy or difficult for you as a first time buyer to get a property as it was before. Mm. Um, It's, there's been a lot of people out there saying that they think the housing market might crash and that people might start um, losing huge amounts on their properties. But realistically, someone is only going to sell a property for less than it's worth if they have to so no one's going to accept 20 percent less on their property um unless they're being forced to do it so i can't say there's going to be a massive difference if i'm honest um the biggest difference we're going to see is how banks are going to approach what people are earning how they've earned historically because we are going to have this gap of three months with lower incomes um and realistically when we're looking at figures for mortgages we always go on the last three to six months so that in the short term is going to be the biggest problem we face yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean, obviously, you never look to capitalise on anything like this that happens, but you kind of do mm-hmm. think to yourself how obviously the economy will react, like you said, you know, and if yeah. people are staggering to go back to work or a lot of business are adapting. I know that yesterday I spoke to someone who um, had got a cruise, uh, they got a refund, but all the people that were working, you know, in this central office somewhere in Nottingham are all working from home. They can also access mm-hmm. the system. They can also do this. And I think... You know, a lot of businesses are switching on to the fact that, well, actually, do we really need to be buying, you know, you know, loads of offices? Do we need to, you know, it even yep. comes down to having one to ones. Is it really vital to go and have a coffee, to spend three, four quid on a coffee, to then put petrol in your in your vehicle to uh, to get to that coffee shop? You go in half an hour out your way, if not 45 minutes there and back. Do you think that obviously from what you're saying, um, going back, we're going to be a bit more smarter? Uh, I think we will be, but I think it'll only be in the short term because ultimately, and I know you love Costa as much as I do. You're always oh. love Costa, saying that I am. Well, I'm a Starbucks boy, to be honest. Um, oh, I you, my, you, my you used to work for Starbucks, didn't you? Seven and a half years. Yeah, and I absolutely loved it. I met a <laughs> lot of wonderful people, but I love the people in Costa. Now, I'm someone who invests yeah. in people. Um, so mm. therefore... You know, I go in for the people, not the coffee. So, and that, that's, a, yeah. that's quite an interesting thing as well. But no, I mean, you're never going to get me out of a coffee shop. I know that much. Um, but I know that yeah. I'll be more mindful of obviously when I go back to work, what can I do from yeah. home still? Having these one-to-ones uh, at home and stuff like that. Um, how do you feel, um, you know, going back? Is it, do you feel it's going to be really hard for you? 
Um, no, I don't think it will. I think I, I, I think I'm very good at adapting to whatever the situation is. Mm. I don't like being stuck indoors. I don't like not being able to go out and, and sit because my thing is sitting in a coffee shop for hours and working. Um, but I think I'll adapt fairly well to when it all goes back. And I think we'll see that with everyone. I think everyone will adapt going back because they'll be used to doing online one-to-ones. They'll be used to working from home. Um, but I think that given another six months or so, people will forget the freedom they had because yeah. I don't think there'll be the freedom to work from home. The people will still have to go to the office. Um, and I suspect we'll go back to pretty much how we were before. We'll just be lazy again, won't we? Yeah. 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 And- because everyone defaults to a default. So, yeah. But I think, you know, I think there's a, a wide majority of people that do want to get back to that normality. They don't want to be at home all the time. You know, I, as, as a filmmaker, obviously I enjoy going out and filming and being creative and creating content. I, I've realized that maybe sitting at home editing is not the best part of the job that I enjoy. But, <laughs> you know, it depends on what frame of mind I'm in. But, you know, I personally enjoy being out, meeting people, having that freedom. Um, but at the same time, you know, I'm respecting the fact that we have to stay at home. We have to adapt and change. Do you think that people will embrace, uh, and this is probably a question more from, from me, do you think people will embrace video more? Do you think more people have gone, do you know what? My business was doing okay, but I didn't realize how much I wasn't promoting myself online and having that digital image of, my, of myself. How do you think moving back, you will take on board what you've learned from this process going forward i suppose it depends what you mean by video so if you mean like promotional videos i think that will pick up but i Mm. think it comes back to the root of the fact that there are more and more people doing this kind of thing so i know for example my in-laws who are in their 70s bless them aren't great with technology but they are on video chat calls and zoom conference calls with the family Mm. to keep in touch now that that generation is is using that that technology and getting used to it then more people will start selling to them via that technology and mm. we'll see them more and more. And it will be through video use and stuff like that. Um, working for Countrywide, I mean, again, Countrywide are a big, big company. They are going to go down the route of using videos more and using social media more. Um, and this will only complement that. This is only going yeah. to drive it forward. So I, I think, think for someone like yourself, it's going to be brilliant. Yeah, I mean, I think that was obviously what I was trying to get at is the fact that, I mean, obviously people will always want promotional videos. That's that's um, where that is. But my main uh, thought was because we've all had to embrace video. I mean, I've do, been doing this for, for over 10 years. So for me, it's quite normal. However, a lot of businesses, a lot of people who are self-employed um, are, have probably never had to do a Zoom call, have never yep. had to go and do this so they're embracing something that they never had any idea of before so you know like we are having a conversation right now um you know have had you done a lot of uh, video conferencing before this pandemic um no so i did i did a lot of stuff by telephone especially when i was self-employed and i moved from essex to the northwest i did a lot of stuff via telephone mm-hmm. um and i started doing bits via video call video conferencing um, before I went back to Countrywide. C- countrywide won't allow us to do that yet. Um, but when the pandemic came in, a lockdown came in, all of a sudden they started really trying to embrace that technology. So when I go back, there is going to be that option there for me to speak to customers all over the UK via video conferencing. Um, the biggest problem the Countrywide has is that because of the industry we're in, it's so tightly locked down. We've got to prove who we are and who we're seeing and, and where they're from that doing it face-to-face via video conferencing isn't deemed um, acceptable in the eyes of some of the financial institutions like the FCA mm. as um, being a um, proper way to verify ID and stuff. So there's uh, pitfalls to be had. But yeah, I, I can't imagine going back to work and not having this option, certainly in the near future. But also, you know, obviously, you know, going back and meeting, you know, because like me and you, we're, you know, we, we, we get the vibe off somebody else and, and, and everybody does. We, we get vibes off people. And, and I think that is what is make or break with someone who is going to use your services or not use your services. Yep. And I think that's something video can achieve, but you know, you're never going to beat that personal one-to-one connection. A lot yep. of my business comes from the fact that people go, I like Mike. He's, he's all right. Um, and that's only because I, I invest my time and I go and see someone and I give them my time. I give them my attention. Um, yes, you can do that on video, but also um, you, you're absolutely right. 
I think we like going out and meeting people and sitting there yeah. and actually finding out how someone works. Uh, is this person going to be right for me? Are we going to get on well and, and stuff like that? Yeah. How have you found, I mean, obviously uh, you're in furlough now. How have you found your day to day with your structure? Is there much you can do at the moment? So I can't do anything with regards to work at all. So I've got out of office on my emails. I've got an out of office on my uh, mobile. If anyone um, wants a mortgage, um, they get a message back just saying, I can't deal with you. Sorry. If you've got any queries, speak to these people. So for me, there's been one change and that is that I can't do anything. So I've had to find time. Or I have, sorry, not time. I've got enough time. I've had to find stuff to do in that time because I've got so much spare time to do it in. So this is this is where the deep rooted questions come. What have you been doing to fill your productive time? Well, I've been snacking. I've done a lot of napping. Um, all the best ones. <laughs> all the best ones. Um, it's weird because um, my other half, Elaine, is working from home. So she's um, normally admin in an office. So she's working from home. So from nine to five every day, she's busy. The kids obviously have schoolwork to do. So when we went on Easter holidays, they've got stuff that they're getting on with. So I am left to do my own thing. Um, I've been trying to do more stuff like cooking because I'm a terrible cook. I, you know, I can microwave meals and that's about it. But I've been starting to do some of my own stuff. Um, but at the start of the year, Elaine and I launched um, a podcast, a true crime podcast. Oh, right, um, okay. So I've been putting more time into that because when we launched it in January, I thought, oh, wouldn't it be great if I had some time off and yeah. I could spend more time writing these episodes and I've had all the time in the world and I'm still right. I'm still doing the same amount of output and it is really is driven by actually this needs to go live on Sunday. So I need to write it Friday, record it Saturday and get it up Sunday. So I'm you, still working to deadline. You dark horse you. I never, I never knew this side of you before. Did you not? No, I don't think we ever spoke about it, to be honest. Um, but again, uh, that is, that yeah, is no. that's the wonderful thing about, obviously, the slice and the show and the fact that, you know, this is 20 minutes to talk about whatever you want. And because you've been in furlough, obviously, you know, we know mm. that you're good at what you do. But it's also nice to know a little bit about what you what you do outside of work. So can you tell us a little bit about your podcast? Can you tell us a little bit about, you know, what it's about without giving too much away? <laughs> Yeah, so um, it's, a, it's a true crime podcast. So every week we uh, upload a new episode on a Sunday and it's about a new case. Um, they are generally between 20 and 45 minutes long um, and they're mostly solved cases and they're all UK based. Um, I've listened to true crime podcasts for years and years. And I've listened to a podcast going back to you know, 10, 15 years when they first started. Um, and I've always wanted to do my own true crime podcast and never quite got around to doing it just because there was other stuff to do. Um, and unfortunately, I've come in at a stage now where the, the true crime podcast market is oversaturated mm. and there's so many big players now that to get noticed, it's difficult. Um, but I enjoy what I do. There's 15 episodes out there now and there's more coming. So um, I can't see me wanting to give it up anytime soon. So what is it called? How can we find it? So it's called Sublime True Crime. Mm -hmm. um, which I think is hilarious because Elaine, who co-hosts it with me, can't say it. She can't pronounce Sublime True Crime without tripping up every single time. I'm not even going to attempt to say it. That's, so, <laughs> Coward. Well, that, yeah. yeah, I'm fine with that. I'm fine with that. I know my limitations. <laughs> well, that's it. You work within what you've got. Um, it's available on all decent podcasts. So Apple Podcasts, Google, Spotify. Um, if you go to sublimetruecrime.com, the episodes are up there as well. Um, and it's, it's serious because we cover some serious cases. But there's also, I hate the word banter, but there's also a lot of banter in between. So it's Elaine and I just riffing off each other. You know, we're, we're a couple, we live together. We've got uh, a lot of stuff to say about things. And we've got the same sense of humour. And I think that comes through and that makes it yeah. stand out. It's a natural. Bit another podcast. It's natural yeah, yeah. and people can relate to that. The, the, the more you can be natural, the better. Um, so, so how many episodes have you done? So we've done 15 so far. So we started in January. There's been one a week. Yeah. Um, the idea was to do um, seasons. So 15 episodes in a season and then have a break and do 15 more. But realistically, we're going to carry on with the second season straight away because we've got the, uh, the episodes written. Yeah. I think people need something in lockdown to, uh, to get them through. Yeah. Um, and it's just designed to, to be you know, half an hour a week just to take your mind off things. And uh, it was originally done to uh, be listened to when you're on the train to work. So yeah. that, that was the idea, 20 to 30 minutes on the train. And that's, uh, there is a good thing now that everybody is literally on social media. Everyone is looking for yep. something to fill their time. So, and that is a good thing. So now's the time to be launching that. Um, I don't know why there's a lorry going past, but there is, there's been a lorry, it's the same lorry going past, I don't know why. Um, so 
I am going to definitely check that out. How have you found the process of filming and recording that? Um, so we're not we're not filming it face to face. It's all audio only. Um, we've done a couple of YouTube bits and pieces, but there we're still getting ahead around appearing on camera. Yeah. Um, the I like I like writing it. I like recording it. I hate editing it. Um, but I like the fact that people can listen to it and give us out, uh, give us feedback on the output. So brilliant. Yeah, it swings and roundabouts, I think. Yeah. Well, I absolutely wish you all the best with that, and I will definitely be checking that out, and I will, I will send you over my thoughts on that one. Um, Thank you. No, honestly, it, it's fine. Um, so, you know, in terms of obviously where you are now, you've, it sounds like you've got a lot of things going. What has been the best thing out of this so far that you've enjoyed? If you can uh, find something thing- positive from it, obviously. <laughs> The best thing about being on furlough is the fact that I am, it sounds really cheesy, but the fact that I am sitting surrounded by Elaine and, and the kids. Hmm. Um, I've spoken to them. I mean, my kids are down south in Essex still with their mum, so I've spoken to them a lot more. Um, and it's just nice having people around. Hmm. Um, but it's also been nice to be able to crack on and do some stuff on the podcast and just generally not stress too much. So. I think if there's one thing we can take away from this, and this is what I was doing well before lockdown, is you've got to have that work-life balance. You know, yeah. I, I could work so many days, you know, and, and never really have my time to do my own thing, but I choose to have that work-life balance. And it's nice to see that people are using their time effectively and actually going, do you know what? Do I really want to be doing six, seven days a week? No, yep. you've got to live in the moment. You've got yes, we've all got to earn money, but you've got to take time for yourself because we're only on this planet for a, sh- a small space of time. Oh, yeah. there you go. There's your timer. That's you done. That's it. How done. did you? How did you find the show? I liked it actually. Yeah, it was good fun. It was Is it uh, good. You, right, it flew by. That twenty minutes flew by. Didn't well, it? you know that. F- That's just the way it is. Well, thank you so much for joining and I hope you enjoy the episode when it does come out. Um, Thank you, Woody. Thank thank you for your time today. If anybody would like to come on the show, uh, by all means, drop me a message. If you'd like to watch any previous uh, episodes, they're all on YouTube uh, and Facebook if you just search Take the Cake Productions. Thank you so much to Dan for joining me today and I'll see you all next week. 